Hey everyone, what's going on? This is Frankie B, and um, this is going to be sort of you know a little journey down memory lane as well as a little bit of show and tell. You see, um, I was invited um, to be on an old friend of mine, uh, his uh, YouTube channel uh, tomorrow um, at 11:30. Um, it's from Crucial Crisis Comics, and uh, his name is Jose Lori. And the reason why it's this, this memory lane is because I worked um, with Jose years ago. Now, my memory is foggy, and I'll be honest with you. I want to say, like, roughly, it must have been either almost late 90s into early 2000s. I'm going to shoot for that, but I'm sure that once we start talking, he'll, he'll enlighten me more. But anyway, so this is, first off, this is his current um, project. Yes, he had a crowdfunder and um I, I had jumped on it and it's for the intrepid universe but originally when he brought me on it was for the concept it was for this concept but it was called ages and this whole idea was that he was creating or working on this universe um that was going to be spanning through time i mean it was it was really vast really really big so what happened was he brings you know i, I forgot how we connected and again, I'll talk to him about that. But, you know, he said, hey, I like your work and um, would you want to work on this? So I said, sure. So anyway, I have to tell you, there are a lot of pages. I, I don't even know, like I have the, the bulk of the pages uh, just scrolled away up in my, my closet. Uh, I was able to dig through it and I pulled out only like maybe, uh, geez, I think there's one, let's see. Five, uh, six of them, six pages, I believe. I have to look at it. But anyway, uh, so it was a, it was a lot, <laughs> and I, and I can't be videotaping all day anyway. I got work to do. Come on now, art's got to flow. So anyway, um, this was back in the day, and this is so important because the way I draw now is so different than how I draw I drew then. Um, I'm much more um, I draw much more smaller now, much much more to the comic book the actual size of how the comic book will be, like roughly six. What is it? 6.625 uh, by 10 by 1875 or something around there, you know, just numbers. But anyway, but back then I used to draw like 4 to 10 by 15, you know, combo board. And this is, you know, one of the pages. So this was page one, issue one. And uh, I'm looking at that. I keep looking at it. And I think what I did back then was that I... Um, went and did a photocopy of it on blue got it done photocopy blue and then i came back in and I, I inked it you know i started adding inks onto the copy so instead of me putting the actual uh you know colors you know inking right on the actual pencils i decided to go this route because i wanted to preserve the pencils so i don't know the pencils i'm assuming are buried even deeper somewhere but anyway these were um my pages um, this is page one not too bad i mean i can see some of the stuff where i was starting to you know i'm going to show some 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 of my older older stuff before this and you'll see how the difference where i was sort of trying to work out my way through blacks and how i wanted to do stuff i was starting to get this weird kind of angler kind of way of um, applying my art I'm sure, I'm sure during this time, Mike Mignola, looking at Mike Mignola stuff definitely influenced me. I love, I always loved doing cross hatching, you know. Um, at the, when I look at it now, I wish that I'd had some uh, letra tone or a uh, screen tone. That would have been really nice to apply to it. But anyway, you know, you, you do what you got to do. So anyway, this was page two. All right. Not too bad. And also another thing I noticed is that back then I used to be much more cleaner with my lines. Like when I laid out my lines, like I would rule them out. Um, but that changed over the years. Um, after I started looking at a lot of how French comics were being done and how people just seemed like they were just doing these, these nice loose um, kind of panels, like literally hand drawn like kind of panels. It made me start thinking about the importance of like, what do I want people to look at? Do I want people to look at my crisp line panel work? you know, of the, the boxes or whatever that's contained in art, or do I want people to focus on the art? And the thing is that I want people to focus on this right in here. I, this out here doesn't really, you know, it has no relevance. It's just merely a device to help um, guide the eye to the artwork. So, 
This is a pretty cool one. And I mean, I cannot tell you how, like, this story was really massive, you know? Um, God, I, I wish I could recall off the top of my head how many issues it was, but I just remember working on a lot of pages. But I mean, look at that. And again, you, you, you gotta remember too, I was heavily influenced by George Perez too. So I, there was this point in my, um, in, in my journey where I was kind of like, you know, I want to, I want to do a, you know, a thousand different characters and blah blah blah. I, I wanted to put a lot of stuff in there, but I also was getting um, also mindful of the process of people reading information and, you know, and working with syllables and stuff like that. So let's, here you go, some more stuff. Not too bad. I still do this stuff right here. I mean, I still add my own special effects in there. And I and I, I will admit I am not I don't consider myself a letterer. I just consider myself someone who does goofy things like this, just to work inside the artwork, you know, like you know, I wanna see like when this person slammed on the desk, you know, boom, you see a little piece of rubble right in front of that, boom, the T. These actually these actually aren't that bad. They actually do hold up. You know, pat myself on the back. It's a pretty good scene. I started loving this whole thing. You know, again, this was also, I was heavily influenced by John Byrne. I was loving a lot of stuff that he was sort of breaking frames and things like that. And I was like, man, I, I really want to do interesting things. You know, that's always been my, my character, my, my trait in, in handling art is like, I feel like you should always keep pushing yourself, you know, seeing how far you can go with it. Um, I think the fundamental rules still exist. Like, you know, you got to understand the sense of where the eye is going to lead the story and, you know, and understand people can um, be able to read it and pick up things um, um, visually really good. But also the fact of um, not being afraid just to push that envelope just a little bit. So anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty good. And then I skipped. So this was like page 25. And um, I think this was a scene like back in ancient Rome, if I remember. And this guy appears in ancient Rome. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. And as you can see, I still do this stuff. Much more clean, like I think my line work has gotten a little bit more, um, I think a little thinner, but I, I, this will always be a staple for me. I love drawing these, these massive energy line, whatever expressive lines, you know, I love it. That's just part of me. I love, this is another thing too, I started doing this whole thing. I even do some sketch cards where they, um, uh, you got you got this massive person in the foreground and then you start pushing back so your eyes kind of travel you know when I look at this now I could probably tilt this guy a little bit better and then maybe push this guy just back a little bit more so you can get a sense of um, perspective but that's hindsight I mean overall it's not that bad in my opinion so anyway there you go now there, there's a whole bunch of them but I just wanted to pop these out because I know I was going to be talking with them and stuff so uh, anyway alright so that's Part one. Now, as I was digging through it, digging through my stuff, I came up with some really, really old stuff. Now, uh, I've been working in the comic book, working on comic books for a very long time. And oh, let's see, I'm trying to do this right, because I have no numbers on these. I do have a rough date. So anyway, let's start with this one. This one was the cover, I believe. I worked. I was with this. Um, my, uh, my writing partner's name was Chad Lewis. He was a writer. Of course, I was the artist. And we both came, and um, he had came up with this concept, and then I sort of worked with him also with character development. And it was called Brothers in Arms. And we ended up doing two issues. And this was the cover for the second issue. And this right here had an overlay. So you can see right there, old school stat, which I hated these, hated doing these. This right here, let's see this guy right here. Front cover page two. Let's see. I wrote any notes. Present arms. Six. Right there. I I want to say that this is. A, I want. Okay. I, I I think this is probably a copy. I copied. Well, I drew it and then I I copied it, and then what I did is to bump up the blacks. I went over it because I can still see some of the maybe Sharpie or whatever over it, and then I also added some. At the time, probably using Prismacolor, um, Prismacolor markers over it to enhance it. And then I also did, um, I used to use Pro White a lot um, with a lot of brush work. I, I was using a lot of brushes back in the day. Um, because we, we were, it was a black and white comic, um, I stuck with warm grays and cold and cold grays um, just to save on cost. I do like that. Really worked hard on that. I think I might have, I think I even added some Prismacolor pencil in there. Pretty wild characters, but Brothers in Arms. All right. Now, I don't know what the page order is for these. 
So again, this is all pencil. This is insane. This is, I think I wrote down roughly some sticky residue here. 312, 1997, book two. And then, yeah, look at this. That's crazy. A brief interlude. <laughs> I actually love this. The transformation phase. That's so bizarre. This guy with a cross and stuff. Oh my God, look at those, those fingers. What are those sausages? It's crazy, but I love the chains. Yeah, oh my God, what's this? Ugh. Oh boy, what a journey. Ugh. All right, now, after that was done, now during this time, um, I was doing the pencils, but then um, there was a inker that was brought in, Chad's friend, who, um, who became my friend as well. Um, I think his name was Brad Renfro, and he ended up doing the inks for me. And um, Brad's inking is, is tight. I mean, even after all these years, I forgot what kind of, there's definitely a Bristol, but it's a really thick Bristol. But boy, look at that. Like, I love these, these little fingers, the, the, uh, his, his inking lines on there, for the, you know? He really handled it really good. Yeah, look at that. And actually, the type is right on it. <laughs> what, what are you? You're not human. Very perspective, very per perceptive son of Christ. I'm an offspring of hell and your death. A demon. This is impossible. We're in a physical world. And as you can see, I was heavily influenced I, during, during that time. Again, as I, I grew up watching a lot of, uh, you know, uh, kaiju's creature of a feature. But also I was getting into anime and seeing what Japan was doing and a lot of the creatures. I mean, Wicked City, um, Demon City, Shijinku, um, just that kind of stuff. And I really wanted to go crazy with my creatures. So you got this weird demon guy right here and he has like a face smiling over here. Oh man. All right, here you go. Let's see. Yeah, Brad's, um, his ink is tight, man. I mean, look, I don't know what kind of black he was using, but that's like solid. That is a solid black. He, I, I don't know what black he was using for this. It's another demon behind here. One of the things about it that I noticed um, when I used to draw was I just, this is one of the problems that I ran into. That's why I, I sort of, um, evolved into a more smaller state was because for me in my mind um i was always hardwired to sort of fill up space i just want to fill stuff up so i would do crazy things like this like put so much stuff in there and it would just be it would get so in my opinion convoluted it just would become so much that you can't really even see too much and it's really tough when it's just black and white too you know maybe if it was in color it probably would work better but i don't know it just didn't make me happy like right in this scene this character is fighting a character a demon who has like um uh what, what uh, chainsaw like arm appendages so he's in front that's in the foreground and then there's another creature right here and back here's a giant creature it's, technically they went into a club and everybody's like they're demons he's like alex aaron protect my body while i shift into the spirit realm i'm going to find out what is going on here tyler don't alex and i can barely defend ourselves damn <laughs> i like that i wish i, I wish i scented it more okay yeah, so this is actually, this would be the page. This would be the page before this, then I would assume, because this is when the people change it. And then you see the, you see these demons and stuff like that. So yeah, I think I'm doing them out of order then. So I'm gonna say like, this is part of the page before this. Maybe, or maybe this and then this and then this one. All right, we'll get there one day. But look at that, my work was crazy. But yeah, as you can see, heavy influence. I definitely was, you know, I actually do like this. I like how intense this looks. All right, now this one was, this is this is my treasure. I love this. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this was a double page spread. And uh, I got out of the table. Let's see if I can move stuff so I can slide it across. But this is a pretty intense, piece but what happens is um there's another character that came called gabriel and he's a black guy dreadlocks and and uh and then he releases his holy might and he just blows his creatures apart you know it's pretty intense intense scene so uh yeah oh, oh, oh no sorry about that 
Yeah, Michael. Sorry about that, Michael. Said, Jesus Christ, Michael. Yeah, he releases this, this powerful ray of light and it just decimates all these demons. So I know I have a bunch of these pages lying away somewhere. Oh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> that is crazy. Look at that. I even put like little things in here. Like you see, like creatures just scream. Oh, yeah, it's like a woman here screaming and. Just all this bizarre stuff. This is crazy. But again, these these still hold up. These are pretty intense. I mean, you're talking about pages from like night. Oh, here we go. Page 15. I did put the numbers. So page, let's see, page 14, 15. Let's see. Oh, seven. So maybe I am on. Nine, eight, okay. 32 yeah so there you go um just a little journey down memory lane um yeah so we'll see so tomorrow i'll definitely be chatting with my uh my my bud jose and um i hopefully um you guys can uh, come check it out i'm gonna put the link to his uh youtube channel in the description of this video and um yeah come on by you know it's just some old school stuff all right, now, thank you so much and uh, for, for listening and just you know, hanging out for a little bit, you know, and uh, as always, keep that art flowing.